Hello and welcome everyone to today's video tutorial during which we're going to explore how to navigate through Hein Online's U.S. International Trade Library. We're going to take a look at the basics of browsing as well as the sub-browsing options that are available. We'll look at various search examples. We'll look at how to use the United States International Trade Commission publications, how to browse them as well as search them, and we'll take a look and understand the data that is linked for the legislative histories that are included in this collection. The U.S. International Trade Library has more than one and a half million pages of content and it's all related to the commerce and the exchange of goods and services between the U.S. and other nations. Now the collection home page of the U.S. International Trade Library, which is what we're looking at here, displays all of your browsing options right here at the top of the page. So in this case, if we look at our browsing options, they're grouped into essentially content categories. So we have legislative histories, CFR titles 15 and 19, scholarly articles, the United States International Trade Commission publications, we have other related works, and the U.S. Code titles 15 and 19. Now I want to take a brief look at each of these categories and then after that we're going to dive into some search examples. So the first thing we're going to look at here are legislative histories. Now some of the notable legislative histories that you'll find in here are your the bilateral free trade agreements, if we scroll down towards the bottom of this list, we're going to find the Tariff Acts of 1909, 1930, and of course you'll see here there's two different legislative histories for the Tariff Act of 1930. You'll find the Trade Act of 1974, the Trade and Tariff Act of 1984, and then at the bottom you'll see we've got our Uruguay Round Agreements Act which is a legislative history of the Public Law 103-465. So those are just some of the notable legislative histories that are in here. Now if we scroll back to the top, you can browse the legislative histories by the publication title, which is the view we have here. You can view, browse them by the public law number, and that's going to sort them by the public law number here. Or you can browse them by the popular name. Now if we go back to browse by publication title here, you'll notice as you're browsing through the title listing, the more information icons. And for some of these legislative histories, if you see this more information icon, if you click on it, what it's going to do is link you to Nancy Johnson's Sources of Compiled Legislative History database. And that's going to allow you to view key metadata about that public law. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with Nancy Johnson's work, it is called The Sources of Compiled Legislative Histories, A Bibliography of Government Documents, Periodical Articles, and Books. And that was a print work that we converted into an online searchable database, which is what we're looking at here. And it's really a terrific source for finding materials related to the major U.S. federal laws. So you'll find most major federal laws are included in this database. And for each piece of legislation that's available, you're going to find the public law number. I'll pull up another example here. You're going to find the public law number. You're going to find the bill number. You're going to find the statutes at large citation or a link to the public law and if you actually click on this it's going to pull up the text of that public law and the statutes at large and urgent hind online for you. And then under that what you're going to find are any relevant books articles and full text legislative histories that Nancy Johnson identified as being relevant to this specific public law. Now if the full text legislative history is available in Hide Online, like this one here, we're actually going to link you to the full text of that legislative history. So again, this is a nice feature that's integrated into this legislative history title listing. Now the other link I want to point out here is this one that says articles that cite this public law number. If we click on this, what it's going to do is generate a search in Hein Online's Law Journal Library and it's going to give us a list of all the articles that cite this public law. So here it's going to give us 146 articles that cite the public law. 
Now, the other thing you'll find as you're browsing this legislative history list is the public law numbers are also direct links right to the statutes at large so that you can pull up the text of the public law. Now, when you come across a multi-volume set or multi-volume legislative history, so if we look here for Customs and Trade Act of 1990, it's a nine-volume legislative history set. If we click on that title, we're going to find a link that says Cumulative Contents. And this Cumulative Contents link is going to display a list of every single document that's included in this nine-volume set. And it's going to organize them by the volumes. So here you'll see Volume 1 and all the documents that are within Volume 1. So if you're looking for a specific report, you could use your um, Find function on your keyboard, which is Control-F, to search for a report number. And it's going to jump you right down to 136. So again, this is a nice um, way to find a document within the full text, all nine volumes of the legislative history. And this is printer friendly, so if you wanted to print the entire list of contents in the legislative history, you would want to do that from this screen here. Now, the other little shortcut you may have noticed when you click on a multi-volume set, there's going to be a link that says search this title. So if you want to search just those nine volumes, it's going to link you to the search form. And it's going to just automatically highlight that title in the title listing for you. So you can just insert your search terms and hit search. So those are the legislative histories and how they kind of work within the library. We also have the CFR and the U.S. Code, Titles 15 and Title 19, Title 15 being Commerce and Trade, and Title 19 being Customs Duties. So if you click on these, what it's going to allow you to do is drill down to a specific year within that title. So for example, for the CFR, it's going to drill us into 2012, and then it's going to drill us even further into the specific parts. We also have other related works, and this section contains a number of titles. In fact, there's more than 200 titles in this section that are unique to Heine Online's U.S. International Trade Library. And that's going to include things such as the GATT Multilateral Trade Negotiations and the Uruguay Round. You'll find the Trade Agreements Program of the United States Annual Report. We scroll through here. You'll find a dictionary of international trade terms that was compiled by the U.S. Department of Commerce. And we could go through here and find all these. Um, the United States Court of International Trade Reports. Cases adjudged in the United States Court of International Trade from 1980 to current. You'll find the Customs Bulletin here, volumes 1 through 46, so 1967 to 2012. And this particular publication is going to include decisions and rulings. You'll find regulations and even notices or other related matters of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. You'll find them for the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit as well as the U.S. Court of International Trade. So that can be a very helpful resource for you. The other thing you'll find in here is the legislation on foreign relations from 2000 to 2008. So we scroll through the list here to get down to the L's. And you're also going to find a number of works related to the multilateral trade negotiations from 1979. And so you'll see the studies one through five here, as well as a number of other works here related to those multilateral trade negotiations. You'll find the NAFTA handbook here and just a number of other really useful resources. And we'll take a look later on at searching a few of these titles. We also have a scholarly articles section. And the scholarly articles includes links to number of articles chosen and reviewed by our editors. So our editors have gone through and they've read these articles and indicated that they have a strong influence and they're really relevant to researchers who are are doing international trade research. So they've sort of handpicked those out and we've made sort of a list here for you. And you can sort the list by the article titles. 
you can sort the list by the authors of the articles or you can sort them by the most cited articles and bring the most cited articles to the top and you'll see cited by 382 if we actually click on that it's going to bring us up those 382 articles that cite that particular article Now the last section that I want to touch on are the United States International Trade Commission publications. And this archive contains more than 4,000 publications and they date back to about 1961. And there's nearly 300 in here that relate to Section 337. Now the United States International Trade Commission is an independent quasi-judicial federal agency and they have broad investigative responsibilities when it comes to trade matters. So they're going to investigate, for example, the effects of dumped and subsidized imports on domestic industries. They're going to conduct investigations that are going to further improve our global safeguards. So these investigations that they do facilitate essentially a rule-based international trading system and these publications are really going to give you some insight into the policy related information and all the reports and publications that are related to their investigations and the work that they do. Now the publications as you can see here they're grouped by the publication number, they're grouped by category, and these are these categories and these document types are assigned by the United States International Trade Commission themselves. Now the category listing is fairly long. And they're grouped here by document type. So let's just look at the document types here. Now there's a couple here it says 332 study and section 332 and these document types are essentially going to be reports and documents that are related to section 332 of the Tariff Act of 1930. So if you click on any document type it'll actually bring up a list of the documents um, assigned to this particular document type by the United States International Trade Commission and you'll notice some are grayed out. We know those documents exist, but we don't have those in full text yet. Um, and you can click on any document to link to the first page of the document. Now, if we click on our mark record data, let's say you saw section 332 is the document type, but you weren't completely sure what that meant. Sometimes this mark record data can really give you some hints as to what that document type represents. So in this case you'll see it says right in the title from the title page, report on investigation number 33240 under section 332 of the Tariff Act of 1930. So that gives you some insight into what this particular document type is. There's also here a general document type and these are going to include things like the annual report of the USITC, selected publications of the USITC, you'll find summaries of statutory provisions in here, strategic plans, and other similar documents that are related to the overall general operations of the United States International Trade Commission. This I and EA is industry and economic analysis. So these are going to include publications and reports related to the industry and the economic analysis of the industry. And these are these particular documents are grouped further into categories. And those categories include things such as agriculture, Africa, free trade agreement, industry and trade summaries, import restraints textile apparel industries and we'll see those when we look at this browse by category option here. Next you're going to find a document type for the North American Free Trade Agreement and these are all publications related to that agreement and these particular documents as well are broken down further into categories including things like textiles, special studies, and the steel industry. Following the NAFTA ones, we have 
tariff and these are essentially going to be publications related to tariff affairs. So they're going to include industry and trade summaries, for example, for specific industries like toys and models, or let's say for video monitors. You're also going to find in here tariff schedules and harmonized tariff schedules. Following that, you'll find trade remedy, and these are going to include publications related to the remedies that are available under the U.S. trade laws. Now, trade rem remedies are really trade policy tools that allow the government to take remedial action against imports that are causing some sort of material injury to a domestic, in a domestic industry. Excuse me. So remedies are usually divided broadly into anti-dumping actions, countervailing duty measures, and safeguard actions. So you'll find a lot of that information in here as it relates to specific industries. Now beyond the document types here, the publications are broken down further into categories. Now, if you're familiar with these categories that the United States International Trade Commission uses, then you're going to find it fairly easy to browse through these um, as they're listed here. But if you're not familiar with them, again, we can use that mark record data to give us some sort of hint towards what that category might be. So, for example, our very first category just says 104. So I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, what does that mean? So what we can do is expand the category and then we can click on the mark record here for this first publication. And we can just peruse through this mark record data and hope that it's going to give us some sort of hint as to what 104 represents. And again, if we look at our title page information, it tells us right here under section 104B of the Trade Agreements Act of 1979. So now we know these are specifically related to section 104 of the Trade Agreements Act of 1979. Now, not every mark record data is going to provide that information that clearly. So other things you can do are try opening the first page of a publication in that category and briefly look it over. So if we close category 104, let's say we scroll down and we're going to look at APTA. And we've got our first document 171 here. Now, our mark record information doesn't give us a whole lot of information or insight as to what APTA might be. So the next thing I'm going to do is just open the first page of this document. And as we start reading through the first page here, we see its tariff commission reports to the president and it deals with Ford Motor Company. And the second paragraph, it says here, the commission's investigation conducted under section 302 302 of the Automotive Products Trade Act, APTA. So that's going to give me some insight and tell me APTA relates to the Automotive Products Trade Act of 1965. So you can use the mark record data again or the title pages to give you some insight into what those categories represent if you're not familiar with them. Okay, so now that we've covered content, the browsing options and the basic features, I want to look more closely at some searching examples and explain how the searching works for various titles. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at our field search option here. Now with our field search, or any search really, you can search by keywords, you can search by the title of a publication, the description, the author, or the date. And those are pretty standard Hein Online fields to search across. But what you're also going to find in here are the USITC title, document types, publication numbers, and category fields. So you can search by these four different metadata fields if you're searching specifically for a United States International Trade Commission publication from the archive. So let's say we want to search across just the USITC publications. So from our document types here, we're going to choose USITC Publication Archive. Now, if we happen to have a publication number, we could just simply choose USITC pub number and insert that number, 1696, for example, and click search. It's going to give us one result. It's going to tell us the name of the document, the publication number, 
the document type and the category, and we can link right to the first page of that particular USITC document. Now if we go back to our search screen here, now let's say we want to find publications related to beef consumption in agriculture. And again, we're still searching these USITC publication archives. So what we want to search across is a category, agriculture. And then we're going to insert a key term here and we wanted to search for things related to beef consumption and click search. And that's going to give us five results from the USITC publications that are within our category agriculture but that discuss beef consumption and using our view matching text pages we can see within these particular publications where it discusses our key term beef consumption and we can link right to those pages. So now let's do a new search. Now let's say we want to find trade remedies that are related to cement. So we know from our browsing options that trade remedy is a document type. So from our drop down, we're going to choose USITC doc type. We're just going to type in here trade remedy. And then we're going to search across the titles of the USITC publications because we specifically want remedies that are related to cement. So USITC title and cement and click search. And that's going to give us 20 matches here with um, USITC publications that discuss trade remedies and cement. So those are the search options you have for searching that USITC publications archive. Now you'll notice here, and I should have pointed this out a few minutes ago, on the left side when you do a search that you're going to get facets that will allow you to further break down your results. So you could say, show me just things in this particular USITC category, or show me just things from 2000 to 2005. And you just check the, the option that you want, and it'll redisplay your results for you. Now let's take a quick look at some other unique searching options. Let's say, I'm going to do a new search here. And let's say we want to find the schedule in the Tariff Act of 1930 for sugar and molasses. So we're looking for that trade schedule. So how would we go about doing that? Well, we're looking for some key terms and we're looking for the schedule, we're looking for sugar, and we're looking for molasses. So what we could do is we could narrow our search here to just that specific legislative history. So we could choose from this list the Tariff Act of 1930 and you'll see here there's a couple of different legislative histories for this specific tariff act. So if it's me, I'm just going to highlight all three. And you can do that by holding down the shift key on your keyboard. And then I'm going to search across the text for keywords. And again, my keywords are going to be sugar, molasses, and schedule. And I've got that all in quotations. And I want to search for those within a proximity of five of each other. And then I'm going to click search. And that's going to give us five results here. Now as we're looking through our results, you'll notice that the Senate reports are actually showing up here in, in the title of our results. So if we wanted to search for a specific report, whether it's a House or a Senate report, we could always search across the title field to do that. So Let's do a new search and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So we would choose this title field here because again now we're searching through the publications of a legislative history so we're going to use just the title and we could insert the report number so let's say it's 101252 and that's going to give us two results and it's going to give us a Senate report from the Customs and Trade Act of 1990 and then it's also actually showing us this bill which references that Senate report. So that's kind of a, a shortcut on how to search for reports across the legislative histories. Now let's look at another example. I'm going to do a new search. 
we want to find information related to the trade remedy or remedies for importing rice from Colombia. So how exactly would we do that? In this case, I'm going to use all keyword searching. So what I want to do is use our advanced search option. And we're going to put trade remedy in quotes. So trade remedy in quotes or trade remedies. Now I'm going to put this whole search string in parentheses because I want to group that search string together. Now I also want to find the term Columbia and the term rice. And we're going to click search. It's going to give us 22 results here. Now, as I mentioned before, we can use our facets on the left side of the screen here to narrow our results. So if we wanted to look specifically at the U.S. International Trade Commission publications, we could narrow it to a specific document type here. We could look at the publication that's categorized as a trade remedy, or we could look at the industry and economic analysis publications. We could narrow to a section type. Again, we could narrow by date. And if we scroll down, scroll down and look at our titles, we could say, you know what, I really just want to see stuff that's related to the general agreement on tariffs and trade. And we could say, show me that specific document. So again, you can use those facets to further narrow your specific results. Okay, so another example. Let's say we want to search just the general agreement on tariffs and trade for information on our trade schedule with Cuba. So how would we go about doing that? You could do that a few ways. If we do a new search here, we could search, we could highlight the general agreement on tariffs and trade from our title listing here. Or a shortcut if you happen to know the title of the volume or the title of the publication, you could insert vol title colon general agreement on tariffs and trade, close quote, and we're going to search across the title field for Cuba. And we're going to click search. And that's going to give us here two results and it searched across two different titles related to the general agreement on tariffs and trade. So that's a shortcut if you wanted to search across that specific volume. Now for these fields that I'm using, vol, title, title, etc., if you need help depicting what those are, on the search tab under the search menu you'll see something that says search tips and if you click on that we'll show you here what those fields are that are available to search across with some examples as well as the common search syntax. So if you're looking for help in what I'm doing this will give you some guidance. Okay, now let's say we want to find a House or Senate report from within a legislative history. Now I showed you one way to do this already. Now the, the difference there is some legislative histories the House report number may show up in actually the description field of that document. So what I recommend is searching the title field or the description field for the report number and we'll do a field search here in this case. So we want to search the title and let's say again we're looking for 101247. So we're going to do the title field for that report number or the description field. Now what we can do here is scroll to the bottom of our search form and what you're going to find down here are various section types or types of documents that we've applied to everything that's with included within this library. So if we wanted to search for 101247, it's a house report, we could say uncheck all these sections and I only want to search these house reports here. And that's going to give us just the House Reports 101247. Okay, so let's look at one more example here. Now let's say we want to search for 
any content that's related to exporting and trade policies with Columbia. So this is more of a subject or topical search. So how would we go about doing that in this library? I'm going to click New Search here. And we're actually going to use an advanced search. What you'll want to do with subject or topical searching, take your key search terms, put them all within one set of quotations, and add a proximity. So for example, we want to search for Trade Export Columbia. All those keywords within a proximity of 15 of one another. Now we want to accommodate for the various ways that this could be discussed in the document. So it might say Trade Export Columbia, or it might be Trade Exports Columbia or perhaps it's trading instead of trade. So how do we accommodate for all those variations of those words? You might think you could use a wildcard. With our search syntax, you can't use a wildcard with a proximity search or a wildcard within quotations. So you need to accommodate them for them yourself. So to do that, we would do trade export Columbia within 15 or trade exports Columbia within 15 or trading export Columbia within 15 or trading exports. So again I've just accommodated for all the variations of that in my search string here and I've combined those using the or boolean operator. So now I'm going to click search it's going to give us 35 results and again we can use our facets on the left hand side to narrow down to a specific type of publication. Okay, so we've looked at all of our browsing options, we've looked at various tools that are embedded in the library, and we've looked at a number of different search examples. Now before we close, I know we're kind of running out of time, but I do want to point out a few other resources that could be of value to you in doing U.S. international trade research. And the first one of these is the Georgetown Journal of International Law. So I'm going to jump over to our Law Journal Library here. And I'm going to open the Georgetown Journal of International Law. Now why is this an important resource? The Georgetown Journal of International Law was selected by the U.S. Court of International Trade as the first law journal that's allowed to publish an annual review of the United States Court of International Trade's work. So starting with volume 38, so let's scroll down here to the Georgetown Journal of International Law. Starting with volume 38 in the Law Journal Library, if we look at our table of contents, you'll find the annual review here right at the beginning of issue one. So special year in the life of the United States Court of International Trade, an International Trade Review. And again, if we look at volume 39, issue one, you're going to find more information again on the Court of International Trade. So the Georgetown Journal of International Law can be a useful resource for you as well. Another resource um, you may find helpful is the International Legal Materials, and that's also available in the Law Journal Library here. And the International Legal Materials often has information related specifically to the North American Free Trade Agreement and the Free Trade Agreement. So you might find that resource helpful. Hein Online's got a Kluwer Law International Journal Library, and you may or may not be subscribed to this. It is an a la carte library. But within our Kluwer Law International Journal Library, there are some key periodicals related to trade. And those include the, scroll through here, Global Trade and Customs Journal, the Journal of World Trade, as well as World Trade and Arbitrate arbitration materials. So these can be some very helpful periodicals for those doing international trade research. And then the last resource I just want to point out is the Index to Foreign Legal Periodicals. And this publication is now available as a database, a searchable database in Hein Online. Again, it's also an a la carte library, so you may or may not have access to it right now. But this is an index of many foreign law reviews, and a lot of those are not 
aren't in the English language, but you can browse or search this database for key trade terms and subject areas to help identify some articles that are related to U.S. international trade matters. So again, those are just some resources that I wanted to point out as other things you may find helpful in international trade research. Now in closing, I want to point out in the International Trade Library, if I go back there just really quick, on the left side under this resources tab up here, we have a number of external links here that you may find helpful. And these are resources on the web. And they include trade law guides, a link right to the U.S. Court of International Trade, as well as the U.S. ITC, the World Trade Organization. So if you're looking for some other external resource information, you may find those links helpful. And this concludes our demonstration of Heinlein's U.S. International Trade Library. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at holsupport at wshein.com, where you can contact us via phone or live chat. Facebook, you can even contact us via Twitter. So thank you so much for your time and have a great day.